Hey everyone, welcome back. It is time for another monthly State of Wrestling podcast. With me once again, we have Campo Reviews, the man who reviews movies, TV shows, wrestling, a little bit of everything. This may be the last you may see of him for a while. He'll be going away on a little vacation, so you may get a couple solo reviews next week, but we'll keep you posted on that. But today we are talking about the State of Wrestling in the month of February. There's a lot of big news items that came out this month, um, and we'll get right into it but first let's start with wwe and they've been on a bit of an upswing they've been doing a lot of good things uh, yeah it's that d- a debatable thing um, well i mean they're at least listening to the fans with cody we'll talk about the whole cody and rock thing right now because since the last time we spoke it was almost guaranteed i think the last time we did a state was right after the rumble and cody won it and they were expecting cody to face roman that very same week, he gives a spot up to The Rock because The Rock takes over as chairman um, is sitting on the board of TKO. And one of the, I think, caveats of him sitting on the board is to main event WrestleMania this year. So he was adamant about him and Roman for the title at WrestleMania 40. But the fans threw up a backlash, so to speak. And I think, I think there is... So up some positives and negatives. There's stuff I want to touch on that is sensitive, and I know people are gonna cry about it. But it's like there's a lot of talk about like, oh, you know, this company all they do is use the old guys that used to be in WWE, yeah. and that's all they do to like a lot of companies, right? And WWE is the company that's built on using old guys to win yeah. things that they don't deserve. Number yeah. one. And Which this we was going to be a situation here. Yeah, a hundred percent. And number two, I don't think, as a company, the realization of what they have is ever truly there. They're always trying to one up everyone else and, and stay on top. That they don't realize they already have such a massive audience. Yeah, that they can. They don't need the Rock to be. They could put two nobodies at WrestleMania, and it's going to sell out, and it's going to get just as many views as last year. Yeah. He, the what? rock the rock's argument is with him in the main event they probably would have had the biggest wrestlemania in history regardless the wwe is going to tell you they're going to the sell big... out anyways yeah if the rock doesn't need to be there well, anyways digressing i just yeah. i think the original plan was stupid and Which i one? agree the with Cody? the fan backlash oh no Cody the giving rock. up his spot it didn't make yeah. any sense especially when you factor in that you would have to go one more full year of doing this story and it's not we can't wait i can But it's not, we can't wait one more year for Cody to be champion. We can't drag the story out for another year. No, because WWE is not known for their long-term booking. They've never done it, let let alone, like, not known for it. Yeah. But, and, like, to wait three years for Cody to finally get his moment, does that mean we have to get another year? But then again, Cody won't finish the story because if Rock would have beaten Roman at Mania, would Roman have won it back? It's inconsistent storytelling um, that that really hurts them, I think, because they ha- they they move in waves. Yeah, and and I don't I don't see the point of the the Rock fighting Roman Reigns except for like maybe to put him over. But why does he need to get put over anymore? No, he, they're both leaving in a few months anyway. And if it was me, I would. It's time for to to push Roman Reigns into retirement. Like yeah. he's he wants this. By the way, I'm not just saying that. He's ready to not be a wrestler anymore, on a, at least Roman? on a full time yeah. basis. Um, and that's fine because I don't like him, but yeah, it's it's, it's just time like, we put the belt on someone who's going to be there day in, day out, defend it at all the pay per views. It's time we put put it on someone who, in my opinion, which okay, I'll make sure I state that can really be someone. At, no matter what match they're in, they can carry the match. Yeah, without someone else good being there. So now you can have Cody fight anyone for the title, and it'll right? be a decent... Roman. It needed to be perfectly catered to what he can do, yeah. or who else is so good that they can make sure his match is good. And the thing and is, he's beaten everybody on that roster multiple times already. Yes, there's a lot of people he didn't beat, but at the same time, they didn't want to push him against no namers because yeah. it made him look bad. Which now with Cody being fresh, you can I would first chuck everybody who's a nobody at him. Uh, Austin Theory, like give all give him all the small people first. So yeah. now you you have a build better up job. to an AJ Styles, build up exactly. to a 
Randy Orton build up to but an Roman LA night. started there and it was he had nowhere to go because yeah. now you you can't go down you can't have a downward yeah. trajectory with it. Yeah. Because he beat Brock, right? Yeah, and but mind you, listen, the Bloodline story storyline was great. And was. I don't think Roman is a poo poo wrestler or anything. That don't get me wrong. I just I'm not a fan. Um, he's very single. He's a one he, note character. Yeah, he has one. That's exactly it. He he has only one dimension. Yeah. Um, in in, in the ring as well. It it's a very Edge reminiscent, and it's not to to knock on Edge. But I've, edge. I've never been an Edge fan because he only has one. The rated R superstar. He has one skill set and one character so he yeah. can't go out of that range at all and we're seeing that right now in AEW yeah the matches are good but Roman's he's got matches are good too but he his himself has gotten stale yeah he himself is not great it's just it just happens right he we're doesn't crit- have that dimensions that someone like his former partner Christian has it's it, but that's because Christian experienced wrestling really outside of WWE and learned to like change he, the way yeah, he does he went it, right? to TNA. He Chris went Jericho to... had that before he even got to WWE. He had yeah. this wealth of experience from wrestling all over and then mm-hmm. kept doing it afterwards. So there's like so there's like a, a build there, right? Anyways, we're digressing from that point. Um I think with Cody you can you start off small and you build your way up to yeah. it and you keep it going and you got to figure out what you're going to do there. The Bloodline storyline was great, but it, their storytelling for these the Cody and Bloodline have been these huge waves where it hits these massive peaks. We were like, wow, this is so good. And then it drops so low. You're like, how mm-hmm. are you still even thinking about telling the storyline? Yeah. And until The Rock coming back, it was so bad. It was yeah. like the worst it's ever been. And the, the them turning The Rock into his just right at the end of Nation of Domination. Yeah, the Hollywood so, Rock. leaving it where it was so good where he was wearing the vest and he was yeah, just he wore the, the crap shirt. out of yeah. everybody. And he did it again. That he brought that character back, and we haven't seen that. And it made me realize why did we ever have face rock? Yeah, because, because the, the crowd. Roman, just... Remember how bad Roman was as a face? Yeah, but the crowd. I think the reason why they turned the rock face was that's that was a natural transition. He just got so over as a heel that the crowd just ended up loving him. But that doesn't mean you have to change him. That's old wrestling mentality. That's like nineteen yeah. nineties, nineteen eighties wrestling mentality. Right, it's like yeah. Macho Man. He got so over there, like we c- can't be a heel anymore. Yeah, he has. He's got to join Hogan. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. but then, no, you don't. Yeah, it's 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 a very backwards way of booking things too. But at least now this is going to go somewhere, and it'll mean a whole lot more if Cody wins. If like that, that's a big if still. A very big if still. I mean, I'm not going to give hearsay on what I think is going to happen. I don't want to get too fan booky, but From, I just I, I'm I'm foreseeing a Joseph Fatu situation at Mania. We'll see. But, um, yeah, WWE. Let's can we just yeah. talk about it a little more? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think they got to figure out what they're going to do with Damian Priest before the money in the bank because once that hits he can't use the money in the bank anymore so from what i understand is drew's resigned yeah so i've heard drew's resigned they're going to give him that big mania win against seth with an immediate cash in by damian priest which is what i've been saying for the longest time so if that actually happens that's then yeah, i would love because i believe i right. believe they're losing the belts at uh at the Perth, at the elimination I haven't chamber. heard the Drew resigning thing, but I do, uh, I do agree that that's what's going to happen because he's definitely winning the chamber match. I think so, and I think it, it it gives them. I mean, that's because WWE is like, hey, he has a some kind of British style accent, so he must be Australian, right? Um, you know, that's how they're like, oh, he's from China. When we go to Japan, we're going to make sure he wins. Like uh, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> You know, oh, we're the, in, WWE booking. We're in, we're in France. Yeah, Gunther's got to win because he's from Europe. Like what? Okay. Well, I mean, the Germany the Germany show. He is going to be main eventing that card. So he's not German. He's Austrian. I know. Ludwig Kaiser supposed to be the winner of that of whatever happens there. That's what yeah. they're saying. But uh, he's German, right? Yeah, and Giovanni Vinci's Italian. I would hope so. <laughs> With a name like that. But no, his well, his real name is actually Fabian Eichner. I don't like that. 
but he is he's from a region in Italy where it's called Sud Tirol and it's they speak German over there. Well, that's where Marco got married. Hey, that's uh I mean they are in that general area. I've always said this. The the people in Italy are different. There's there's two like there's a lot multiple variations, but there's two big ones. The people in the very north mm-hmm. are very different than the people in the lower like 75% of Italy. They these mm-hmm. people are all Mediterranean. The people in the top are more Austrian, Switzerland, like Alpine. those kind. Yeah, the Alps. The people in the eight in Milan, they're mountain they, people. They they lo- they look like Germans. They don't look like Italians. Really. Six foot three, blonde hair, yeah. blue eyed, like fair skin. Their their whole lifestyle is completely different. Where the people in the south, like where look most like of me. our family is, they're very like dark and like hairy. Yep. Like I mean, look at me with how dark the beard is still. Yeah. He's basically like, you can't tell from me. You can't tell I'm that white in this video, but I'm pretty white. <laughs> yeah, the sunlight's shining. But uh, yeah, so from what I understand, so we'll quickly run over Elimination Chamber. You got the Judgment Day. They're going to be facing against what they're called now is New Catch Republic. They changed their name from British huh? Strong. So British Strong Style changed their name to New Catch Republic. I mean, I get it, but why? I don't know. But I have a feeling they're going to win this. They finally got to put some gold on Pete Dunne. Your little hey, chicken. I I don't agree because he sucks. But like Tyler Bate, I like him. Okay. Um, the women's elimination chamber match is set. Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Tiff Stratton, Naomi, and a returning Raquel Rodriguez. They threw everybody for a loop. They said Jade Cargill hey, was hold on. Win. The first match is for the tag titles. At least on the card, it is. Yeah. They got to split the tag titles. It's for both. But they got to split them. Or make them back into one belt. No so more what I'm under- four belts. From what I'm also understanding, there's talks that at Mania, there's going to be a tournament that's going to culminate for a brand new tag team title. And that like the same way they did with the other ones? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll allow it. Continue your story. Okay. Um, Raquel Rodriguez, this is being recorded on, uh, just for clarity, this was recorded on the Tuesday. So it's the day after Monday Night Raw. Everybody thought Jade Cargill was going to win that last chance battle royal. She wasn't even in it. It was a returning Raquel Rodriguez. Why? I don't know. I I they I think they don't have faith in Jade Cargill yet. And not only that, I don't think it'll look good on her if she loses a big match like this. Like she needs to win this match, right? Uh, but this is this uh, what a lot of people were speculating when I actually looked into it, and I believe you might have even have said this. Um, and a guy at work told me this as well. Big WWE fan. He's like, what they're gonna have to do in that match to to make whoever wins wins or win is they're going to have to get one person in there who's fodder, who we kind of have general yeah. ideas and everyone else is somehow going to have to get knocked out, like broken through the cage onto the floor yeah. outside. So they can't come back in. Liv Morgan is the fodder in this match. I think so as well, because they really want to put a shine. I think they really want to put a shine on Stratton. I think the winner of this is going to be Becky Lynch or Tiffany Stratton. Yeah. I believe so too. Um, my I'm leaning more towards Becky Lynch, and she's gonna lose it. Uh, she's gonna lose at Mania. I think Ripley. It has retaining. to be if you if you do this for her to win again. I think you're the most backwards company, and you have no yeah. idea what's going on. This is like Bishimon winning the tag titles again. Yeah, exactly. Which is probably gonna go happen. Watch it's the last make review. Me really upset. Watch our review earlier in the week uh, for information on that. And then we have uh, the aforementioned Rhea Ripley is defending the belt against Nia Jax. She's gonna absolutely crush her. And we have Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, Bobby Lashley, LA Knight, Kevin Owens, and Logan Paul in the men's elimination chamber match. This is the match where it's going to set up LA Knight and Logan Paul at Mania. Yeah, and I think that's what we all thought was going to happen. Anyone who didn't think LA Knight was going to win the United States Championship and had never going to win a world championship is bizarre. Yeah. You're bizarre. Unless it sets up a three-way because Evan Owens, uh, Kevin Owens still is in that picture. So it may set up a three-way match. It, it would be. And you know why that would happen. So that Kevin Owens takes the, the pin. Because Kevin Owens taking the loss will not hurt him. Like, I and- understand this from uh, now just the amount of wrestling that I watch. But it's so yeah. WWE-centric and it's mm-hmm. so baloney to me that you always need a third person to take a pin. Like some people can lose and still yeah. look good. Yeah. Like for example, if Drew wins a chamber and ends up beating Seth at mania, 
Seth will not lose any value in that loss. No. And he can take some needed time off to heal mm -hmm. up. And you're going to get some fresh matches. You're going to get Drew versus Nakamura. You can get Ju Drew versus Tommaso Ciampa. You can get like... Bronson I'd Reed. love to see Drew versus... Tommaso Mas Ciampa as well. Um, no, I I wouldn't mind seeing that. This, but that's not going to happen because it, it he's going to win and he's going to lose right yeah. away. Which you he still have to. They don't yeah. have enough time left. Yeah, or he, he then... could be. He could. Drew. I mean, Damian Priest cannot win. That's fine. But the cash in has to happen at Mania. It has to happen. Hey, how about this? Drew Drew loses to Priest, but Finn blames Priest for losing the tag belts. Turns face on Damien, kicks him out of judgment. That's day. what I think is happening. You don't even have to give me that. I already think that's what's going to happen. Yeah. I think Finn is going to... No, I think Finn is going to try to do that, and he's going to get turned on by everybody else. Did I say and Drew? That, Finn. Yeah, no, no, Finn. But yeah, and F that'll make Finn a face, and you'll get set up Damien Priest versus Finn Balor. Yeah, and then you put uh, Finn and Drew on a team. Call them like the... Drew Finn. Call them Brexit. Yeah, because one's Scottish, the other one's Irish. They have nothing to do with England. Yeah. And just let it ride. Yeah, I like that idea. So um, I think that's enough WWE talk for now. Uh, let's move on to another big news that happened since the last uh, state is my boy, Scott Damore, unceremoniously fired from TNA Impact. Genuinely one of the stupidest moves ever in the history of wrestling replaced him with a non-wrestling guy and not just a non-wrestling guy like literally a non-wrestling guy yeah like never even been there so you got rid of basically your head of talent relations your head of booking and the president of the company who brought that company back from the brink over the last five years with a guy who knows nothing about wrestling and tommy dreamer and you've you've made so many smart moves lately to bring in all these people without direction. It's just going to go to shit. Yeah. Because I don't think Tommy dreamer knows what to do with half this talent. And, and I do think from like a control situation, a TNA was probably the most um, controlled locker room in all of wrestling. Like, Scott Demore no... had, he had them eating out of the palm of his hand. Yeah, there was no infighting, nothing. It was like, this is what we're going to do. Like, you could see it when we were at the show, how calm everyone was just walking around in the crowd and, like, t they were all hanging out, like, behind the curtain thing. Yeah. There was no, like... They BS were literally having thing. fun behind the scenes. Yeah. Legit having fun. Like, at one point, we saw Santino watching the rest of the show from the crowd. And it, that's, that's what wrestling is. Yeah. That camaraderie. Um... I don't know, um, because I was talking with uh, with that guy, George, and he said they're looking to take TNA to new heights this year. I don't know. I think this may be the, the downfall of TNA. Well, I don't now. think they knew that this was going to happen. Um, from, what, from what I've heard, the rumors, which uh, seem to be confirmed, is that there was a bank, some kind of bank, that, was, that wanted to do a deal for an advertisement and Scott mm -hmm. Demore was talking to him and was like, it doesn't make sense for us because it's so something that no one would watching the show would care about. Why would I be advertising? Something that has nothing to do with this. Yeah. I mean, they do advertise a lot of weird things, but they're usually like movies or video games. Yeah. And it's just to me that it does seem weird. Like, why would I be involved with a bank? Yeah. And they, and the brass at Anthem thought that didn't have uh that was a poor decision and they got rid of them. And it's it, apparently it just it was a rolled a rolling effect downhill after mm -hmm. that of them just not agreeing with what he wanted to do. This guy broker deals, and we talked about this, but with CMLL and AAA mm -hmm. and New Japan and no WWE WWE and and you're this is you're gonna let him walk. Do you think Triple H is really gonna trust you now that you fired this guy who's the one who did all of these deals? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Um. It it absolutely doesn't, and I don't know. I feel I I like I honestly do really feel bad for Scott Demore. You know what this he this, he's a he's a great wrestling mind, and he'll land on his feet somewhere. But and I hope he goes back. There's a lot of rumors that the locker room is like really upset. Half like the they, locker room wants to leave. Yeah, uh, they they wrote a letter. I I think you might have seen this mm -hmm. that they all 
go together as a group, the whole locker room, and sent it to Anthem saying that it's like this was uncalled for. Yeah. Um, and that's where the whole thing where Anthem said, well, if you want release, because of Scott Demore will grant it for you. That's crazy talk. Yeah. And, and you lose your connection to all the Canadian talent you were pulling off the indies to, to join this company. In all fairness, Josh Alexander just resigned with TNA. Yeah, that's, but I mean, he could, they said they'll buy you out so he could walk if he wants. Yeah. Um, I think he resigned because his wife just got a job there as well. Yeah. Uh, she's a new, she replaced the, as that guy called him, David Piffner. I I like David Piffner. (laughs) Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really shocking to me and I hope he'll do great somewhere else. I just, what do you do now? Yeah. Them. This this reminds me of WCW before Eric Bischoff when they were a, the whole when TNT or Turner Broadcasting was fully in control of what they were doing and they had the guy that was no over the top rope. No, role. this reminds me of post Eric Bischoff with Vince Russo. Yeah, but this it, is what's well, going to happen. It wasn't that controlled by the network. Where now the the company that owns WCW is in full control. Or sorry, TNA yeah. is in full control of what's happening. Yeah. It's I don't know. This is bad news. This could be bad news for TNA, which we had such high hopes for them. I mean, I'm not going to stop watching because of it. Let's no. see how it goes. But I already yeah. don't like a lot of the setups that are coming out of this. Yeah. Um. The talk. My personal opinion. I feel with the release of Kevin Dunn and to get some fresh blood into the uh, into the backstage producer role. I think Scott Demore would be a perfect fit back there. I don't want him in WWE. No, I think there's already too many hands in the pie, and with the Rock there, who knows how long you're going to last before you get that's fired? They, they're saying Triple H may not la- make it to Mania, but that's for other reasons. So if anybody Multiple who doesn't reasons. know with the Vince McMahon situation, there's a lot of people, and 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 this is a funny part. Someone was telling me that like, oh, they they have nothing to do with it. I'm like, it's not the point. They have nothing to do with they it. They knew about it. You're telling me them as close of friends as they were with Vince McMahon and being behind the scenes for this long, they didn't know about that. You deserve to lose your job for that. I'm sorry. That's just how it was. Yeah. And then it's say it, it's, it's just as bad committing the crime and not reporting the crime. I feel. Yeah. Imagine knowing that he was doing this for this. This is like on an Epstein level of like, maybe yeah. not to that, like <laughs> not degree, to a personal was Island, sick. but, but like, Right. And it's not like underage people, but it's like the, the amount of stuff he was doing was nonstop vile. for 30 years. It was vile. Like he absolute... shit on someone. I'm not and they made them sh- to, to be no, funny. It's, I mean, it sounds silly to say, but like he he made someone shit on Brock Lesnar. Allegedly. Let's, allegedly. allegedly. But it, it, I think there's a lot more going to happen. I think they just want to wait till after Mania for that. Right. Um, and you can, there's already, is that been... the reason why Triple H was kind of deflecting the questions at the Royal Rumble? It's very possible. It's very possible. Uh, so a lot of backstage people have leaked things to, um, so we can segue this into New Japan for a bit, yeah. I think, but I'll, well, let me give you this. So a lot of people behind the scenes were reporting to, like, uh, I can't think of anybody's names right now. Sean Ross Sapp and like all uh, those yeah. guys. Dave about Meltzer. how that behind the scenes, like at week after week, they're slowly being these random new guys coming in that are sitting on the writing team and getting in the production roles and like learning how to do the editing and all of this that are coming from the rocks, personal camp. And yeah. they think that's that slowly what's going to happen is he's going to fire everybody that worked at WWE and put his own guys in. And that TKO is already, already behind him he, because he's so popular in the world. Like it already happened. Like he said, you want me back. I need my writer. Brian Gewirtz has to come back with me. Yeah. And there's like a bunch of random guys just sitting in and it's like as if they're there to learn what to do so that they can get rid of everybody else. Yeah. The Rock himself is worth about as much as WWE. So I think probably. they're willing to just. Another another name that's been wants. there forever will probably go is uh, Michael Hayes. Michael Hayes. It's the three names that are probably going to go. The three big names, at least, would be Michael Hayes, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels. Yeah, I'm sure Michael Hayes shit on somebody, so he's, yeah. gone, he's probably gone. But I mean, and, and we're not making light of the situation. It's a very serious no. Fingers situation. Fingers crossed, though, that uh, Booker T's on that list. Right? Big Let's time. Hope so. Yeah. After, after hearing about all the stuff that went on in his indie promotion and, like, not helping the girl who was getting beat up, like... yeah. 
and then blaming her for it is crazy. It is, but I digress. Um, um so let's also, hold on. Let me give you the yeah. segue. From all of the reports they've gathered from behind the scenes involving mm-hmm. Okada, he's only been there one or two times, and his meetings were very, very quick. Short, yeah. And they were nothing about, like, wrestling. Yeah. I think Okada just went to WWE to show them the respect, and that's it. Yeah. Because his mind is made up. As far as I know, and as what I've been, like, I didn't just, like, oh, you know, surface level this. There's deep digging on the internet, Reddit, all the videos from all the outlets, like, reading the articles. The only thing WWE offered, they didn't even offer him as much money, apparently. No, they offered him NXT. And they they said the only big offer they had on the table was you'll get to wrestle at WrestleMania. Imagine telling Okada, one of the biggest names ever in wrestling, mm-hmm. that you're we're not just offer Japanese. You we're talking about wrestling. Yeah. yeah okay. Oh, well, thanks. I'll, sure. I'll just I'll come here when I'm about to retire. Sign up for four days and wrestle at WrestleMania. And that's it. I, mean? I could do that too. Exactly. Um, with all accounts, I think. Okada is bound for AEW. I think that's why they called that. What is it? They're doing Boston with two S's. Oh, Boss big for business. Sasha. Yeah, big business. That's Which is it. tomorrow night, isn't it? I think so. But yeah, they called it big business, but they also spelled Boston with two S's. So like Sasha Banks, the boss, but two dollar signs, Monet and Okada. Yeah, uh, which I, for which sure we saw. It's, Remember we saw Boston. that. La- yes, but we saw that last year. Remember when Monet won and her and Okada at the end of Battle in the Valley held up each other's arms? Maybe they're coming in as like a, a intergender group. Group or a faction. Because she could talk for him. She's actually a pretty decent talker. Yeah. So they may be coming in as a, as a faction. Money Inc. No, Money Inc's been done already. That's hilarious. Beer Money Inc. Beer Money Inc. <laughs> um, but uh, the CEOs. CEOs. Uh, they, we know for sure Sasha Banks is coming. Yep. That day, but I have a good, I have a feeling that Okada is also coming. Yeah, because dollar signs, boss, business, that all lines up with Okada as well. Yeah, the rainmaker. And where's a bigger, a bigger, right now with the way that they're trying to shrink their audience size. Yeah, like to get into the smaller arenas. Boston is a way, big market. Boston is a big wrestling market, number one, and they're going to TD Garden. They're not wrestling at the Rinky Dink Town, so they got to pull in the crowd, and to get the mm-hmm. crowd, you got to have a big thing. Yeah. Um. Which I'm hoping it's going to turn out really good. Uh, if you see they're going to take Toronto, the car and run you over. For Toronto, uh, for AEW, they're only it's not. First the of Co- all, Coca Cola Coliseum is not even that big of an arena, but it's a no. really good venue for wrestling. Um, they're only selling half the arena. The other half yeah. is blacked out. So the hard cam side is there's no tickets available for that. And so, and by the way, I looked. All the tickets are available. Yeah, still tickets available. There's no, no, all of the tickets are available. Really? It looks like they sold like four seats. Oh, geez. It's going to be fun. I think everyone's waiting because yeah. I'm not going to bullshit. AEW is way overpriced. It is. And their storylines are garbage. Like when you're, st- I sent you that clip. When you're stealing lines from an episode of The Simpsons 30 years ago, like it's... literally, she stole that line. I see you've played knifey spoony before. We all know which episode of The Simpsons that is when they went to Australia. That's poking fun of WWE going to Australia and the fact that what's her name is supposed to be an idiot. Yeah, but it, it, you know what? They're okay. They have good stuff going on. The matches are amazing. Like the, yeah. uh, the one thing is Orange Cassidy needs to lose. So yeah. I guess this was our segue to AEW, not New Japan. Yes. But uh, Orange Cassidy needs to lose. So does Eddie Kingston. But the match against Matt Taven, was it? No. Mm -hmm. Was it Matt Mm -hmm. Taven? Was amazing. Like, who would have thought a Texas death match between Orange Cassidy and Matt Taven Taven. was going to be what I wanted to watch? When it ended, I was like, oh, my God, that was so good. Or the draw draw between uh, uh, Paige and uh, Swerve. That storyline is arguably the best Mm storyline in wrestling, in my opinion. Absolutely, it is. I'm so into it. And the fact that somehow they turned all three of them heel, but they're all going to fight each other is like crazy to me. And Joe does not care about any of them. That's what I love. When they're arguing and he's like, I'm the champion. You're going to pin me or you're not going to win. And he's just walked out. Yeah. I have a feeling Swerve is pinning Samoa. I I hope Swerve wins. I would love that. I think Swerve is right now. 
he's the hottest in in AEW right now. He might be one of the best wrestlers, period, in the world at this point. Yeah, like he's, he's in a special category yeah. with or with uh Will Osprey at this point. Yeah, and he's I'm sure he's glad that uh, he did not opt to return to WWE when the rest of them did. Nothing but good matches coming out from yeah. that those three, yeah. and I'm and so that's the happy thing. So that. that's what we're saying. The in ring work in AEW has been good. It's their storylines are, but weird. they've never had storylines. No, I wish they true. would go more Japanese and just I know because it's the North American audience needs to have storylines. Yeah, but it's like just wrestle, just give yeah. me wrestling. Give me like, what I don't give, want. Give in me Japan? Osprey versus Takeshita. Exactly, Why? just for that. If what I don't want that Japan does, which we talked about, is yes. and they have matches Japan. where there's no story, there's no consequence, there's no reason, there's no consequence, but they're like four minute matches on a card just to have somebody on a card. I don't want that. It's like we we're saying in the review uh, earlier this week. We have Lij versus Just Five Guys. We've seen this match, a five on five match. We've seen it four times since Wrestle Kingdom, and it's just you need to. They just want to put all these names on the card. But if you're going to do that, give me a good match. Yeah. Don't just put five on five for five minutes and it doesn't mean anything. Like, I don't care. Um, we were saying, though, in the review, we'll expand on this now. Good segue to New Japan is we think Naito is not at 100%. I don't think so. I, I But I really hope I don't I don't want to lose Sonata as a contender, but I don't want him to win the belt back already. I think he may lose at New Beginning and then set up another match for Sakura Genesis. Which isn't that where he won the belt? Yeah. Didn't he win at Genesis? Yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll see because it that's a weird one for me just generally. I don't know. Because Naito has not really... I don't think he's defended the belt once yet, has he? There, there's no one really that you can give the belt to at this point where it's going to feel right. No, and now with all I the think movement. that's the reason too why they gave it to Naito was because really nobody else is there you're not going to give it if Tanahashi would point. he'd take the belt back Naito hit the point yeah of it's time to finish the story as well let's just yeah. be honest at which good they beat WWE to the punch mind you this story has been going for a lot longer yeah but it just it felt right and and like for me that's my favorite wrestler so I don't care I'm very happy about it yeah the guy but who you did not make PWI's top 500 last year yeah. you do not you, yeah fuck and and his match versus Will Osprey was well, we I think we gave it match of the year. Yeah, we did give it match of the year. Yeah, and I think a lot of people did, but he's not on the top five hundred. So no. Fuck yourself. Anyways, um, didn't uh, two women made the top five hundred men's list? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Anyways, um, the I think it's it's just an odd situation. You don't have Jay White. Yeah. You don't have Will Osprey. You don't have Okada. So your three main guys you would have fell back on are all gone. So Naito yeah. has the belt. You could you could do the feel good moment here and let Goto finally win his world mm-hmm. championship. Um, you could give it to Shingo, but you can't get it off him. But from Shingo, right? You're not no. going to make Shingo fight him. Um, I mean, I you mean, do eventually down the road. They're building up Finley. And Finley, yeah, but Finley still has so much story to tell with the belt that he has that yeah, I don't think you Finley's can do it. Finley's not at that level yet. With as good as he is, he's not at the level where Osprey is. Where you know, like and they, you have the risk right now that we've been talking about, where all of Bullet Club might fall apart because yeah. of people leaving. So you you're risking doing Their, that. Bullet Club right now are working on a pay per show basis. Like the whole Bullet Club, almost for anyone out there who I doesn't know. I think Finley's that. the only one that is officially signed. Finley, Kenta, and Chase Owens. Yeah. Because right now, Fale, I don't even think Fale's in New Japan anymore. No. I think he's just on if they need him, they bring him in type yeah. of contract. And, and Coughlin, all the, the all Connors, four tag teams. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all four guys from the tag teams are literally getting day to day contracts, match contracts. At any day, they could just say, see you later. Because there's talks that WWE are high on Coughlin and Connors. And why wouldn't they be? And Gabe Kidd, too. Well, Gabe Kidd apparently is like AEW is willing to give him whatever he wants, which I don't know. Nah, that's not for me. No. Not there yet. But, I mean, Gabe, Gabe Kidd, if New Japan keeps him, Gabe Kidd has the potential to overthrow Finley. So, I actually have a question, and this is going to go back on, like, back to AEW for a second. But no. I just thought of it. W- what do you do here? A- and is... Maybe Daniel Garcia, your scapegoat in this situation. What do you do if Cash Wheeler goes to jail? 
Give Dax a solo run. Just a pure solo run? You don't pair him up with Garcia and have them become like the new FTR, like the new VR? Maybe eventually. But Garcia needs... I mean, it, if they do this now, that's good for Garcia to to solidify his future because you can give him a few runs with a decent... But if you don't pull the trigger now with Dax and give him a little bit of a... Sol- if he wants it. If he doesn't want that solo run, that's fine. But me personally, I, I need to at least give him a run with, like, say, the ROH title or something. Yeah, he's had a lot of really good solo matches where yeah. Cash has barely ever wrestled solo. Yeah. The only thing, Dax, he's a little bit more injury prone than Cash. I mean, they've they've pretty much wrestled through all their injuries. Yeah. But I mean, give him like what's what's uh you know what give him a run a run with the New Japan Strong. Yeah. Okay. Like, give him something. At least have like even if it's like five six months, give him at least that little bit of a run, and then pair him up with Garcia and have him like the new FTR, the yeah, new VR, I, I, the new VR. They need to figure it out. They need yeah. to figure it out. Yeah, because he, a- his trial is. I think his he's convicted, right? They convicted him. I don't know what happened. I haven't been paying attention, so I don't. Or want to his trial's coming up very soon. Or they he passed the the pretrial by the jury got voted in that he's going to go to trial now. Yeah, right. That's exactly what it is. He has to go to trial. Like, and you know what his crime is? That Pulling a just, gun out. He pulled the gun out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not monetized, so I can say that. But isn't that well? We're already too deep in this video. No one's yeah. gonna like the thing won't catch it. Um. But yeah, but, no, that's his thing. Uh, somebody uh, road rage, and he pulled out a he pulled out a weapon, and that's why he's got arrested. Yeah, it's like it's crazy. People in the states have guns. Yeah, they're allowed to have guns. They shoot yeah. the guns at people, but this guy is going to jail just because he showed someone the gun. A piece. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't make sense. And those other people all get off with their fucking crimes. Yeah, I don't it's know. crazy. It is crazy. Um, anything else you want to add to the state? Um, not really, not particularly. I, I'm curious to see what Noah is planning because they seem like they're really lost for storytelling yes. at the moment. They are lost, but at least with Noah, the seeds are there. We could see something coming up with GLG. Yeah, and Team Noah is definitely has yeah. something that that something. was there. That there was only that faction had to be created for a reason because you didn't yeah. just create it and put in Yone and what's his face. <laughs> like that's Saito. not a real. You know what I mean? No. That's not a real faction. But you did it because you're planning on building it. Like a storyline is yeah. coming where GLG is trying to take over everything and they're. You need Team Noah happen. to. Yeah. yeah. And GLG, too. It's a lot of Gaijin. Yeah. Which that's what I was saying. I think Daga and like some of those guys are going to end up joining that team. The Noah? No, no, joining GLG. GLG and then Noah's going to get like Mar- a begrudging Marafuji is going to join. Put Dr. Wagner on Team Noah. Yeah, there you go. And then you get it. Like, they can't beat them. It's not going to end. And then Kiyomiya yeah. comes and it's like, okay, um, I'll do it. I'm here to save everybody. On one condition, I get my title match against Dr. Wagner Jr. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, all right. All you right, got to do something. I yeah. don't know. And but Stardom, Ninja man. Oh, team, Stardom. Stardom's either in the, on the page, li- the line to lose every single one of their top wrestlers right no, now. No, that's another big news. We didn't even touch on that. Uh, Rossi Ogawa. Oh, yeah. That guy there was let go guy. from... St- that guy was let go from stardom for uh contract tampering. I mean, it's there's no rules in wrestling. WWE's been contract tampering for years. The only thing is he got caught, but stardom is like in a tailspin right now. They got nothing going hey, on. Stardom is the one who fired him. It's not yes. like he got caught and then something happened. No. Stardom was like, no, dude, you're not doing this. Get out of here. Yeah. Which good on them for that, I guess. I think he had something to do with Megan Bain and Mariah May. I think he had something to do with that. But they're both still attached to their original companies, which yeah. is weird. And I don't know what, what's going on with Megan Bain. Yeah. Um, she doesn't seem to be going back to AEW, so. I don't know. And Julia has been in a tailspin. I don't know if Julia's even going to end up leaving at this point. No, her, her, like, even though she's the champ, her stock has dropped. Her matches have not been what they were. 
you kind but of even her you took away her popularity by by pushing her in matches like no offense because I think it was like a beast match right against Megan Bain, but her last couple matches have been against lower tier yeah wrestlers number one and number two you broke up the faction that everyone loved for, yeah because she was leaving and she still not hasn't left yet yeah she's still a champion I don't know don't make no sense don't make no sense right. where where where's uh freaking yuka sakazaki what's going on with that they took they took her off the roster did you notice yeah. that off the AEW roster. And she's off the the roster for Tokyo Joshi Pro. So which where is she going? Is she going to Japan? is the WWE get her instead? She'd be a great fit in Julia? NXT. I, I would love her to be in uh on TNA, to be honest. Or Yuka Sakazaki joined the uh Buki Warriors there. I'll take that. But Why not? I digress. We um both have. Yes. Um, anything else we want to add to that? No, I don't have, I think I have anything else. Okay. So with that out of the way, guys, thanks again for joining us. Um, if there's anything you think we have missed or a topic we need to touch on, make sure you let us know in the comments below. I'll leave this guy's information in the comments as in the description box below. So make sure you go give Campo reviews a follow. Um, he's not here, but go give Putty a follow. Me and Putty broke down the Deadpool trailer and, uh, we did a little bit of uh, fantasy booking with some deep lore on Marvel. So make sure you go check out that video. I'll have that linked as well. So with that out of the way, in the words of Kenny Omega, goodbye and good night.